Amid growing calls for President Trump to unite the country in the wake of the Pittsburgh synagogue massacre, some are requesting the president stay away from the city. More than 18,000 people signing an open letter to President Trump. That letter reads in part, for the past three years, your words and your policies have emboldened a growing white nationalist movement. You yourself called the murderer evil, but yesterday's violence is the direct culmination of your influence. President Trump, you are not welcome in Pittsburgh until you fully denounce white nationalism. Joining me now, Tammy Hepps and Kate Rothstein, who are members of that group that wrote the letter, Bend the Ark Pittsburgh, is part of a national progressive Jewish group that opposes President Trump. Uh, I appreciate you both taking the time to be with us today, and, and we are going to talk about the letter, but first, I'd just love to hear a little bit more from you about, you are both in a series of photos that for many people um, have really become so much a part of this event as well, as we see you uh, embracing one another, uh, reading from a prayer book. Could you take us back to that moment, Tammy? Uh, just what it was like for you to be there in those moments together um, and how you're all doing today? In that moment, we were both coming from our synagogue, which was just a little ways up the street from there. And we were all heartbroken and we were in shock. And what Jews do in times of mourning is that we recite psalms. So the three of us went there to recite psalms because that is what you do between the time of death and the time of burial. And I know that picture has become a touchstone for so many people, but we really want to emphasize that there are Jewish people around the world who are reciting psalms right now. There are people in our community who are in the Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office around the clock taking hour shifts reciting psalms just feet from where the victims of this of this murder are and they will be doing that until all of the bodies have been laid to rest and then instead of reciting psalms they will turn their attention to our our sacred texts and they will be learning from that in, in the memory of the people who were murdered so in that moment we were just thinking we needed to do what jews do but we want you to know that we were three people who happened to be in front of a camera but they're are thousands of people around the world who are doing the same thing that, that we did and praying for these people who were murdered in this way. As much as you are reciting those prayers uh, to also bring comfort, as I know, Kate, does, does being around someone like Tammy, does knowing that there are people around the world who are also reciting those psalms, does it bring you some comfort in this moment? It is good to be with community and with people who are able to support one another, to support one another in this time of, of, of terrible tragedy. Uh, Rabbi Jeffrey Myers from the Tree of Life Synagogue was on here at CNN earlier today and he was asked specifically about the open letter. Take a listen to his response. Rabbi, um, President Trump has talked about coming to Pittsburgh and coming to your synagogue in the aftermath of this. Do you want him to come? The, rab the President of the United States is always welcome. Um, I'm a citizen. He's my president. He's certainly welcome. The rabbi there saying he's always welcome. I'm curious just the reaction from both of you. Tammy, do you first? I believe that... Oh. Um, I respect Rabbi Meyer's position. We have a joke in the community, two Jews, three opinions, but we know that we are representing tens of thousands of Jewish people who have already signed and people in, in across the, the United States, around the world, who feel that the blood of these victims is on President Trump's hands, that he has knowingly and intentionally and selfishly for years used this rhetoric to endanger our community and, and all the other communities that have been on the front line since he took office and even before that. And on behalf of our community of people, we are saying, President Trump, you cannot come here until you renounce the words and the policies and the deeds that you have done that led to this day. I respect all of those who see it differently. We did not post this letter to sow dissent in our own community at a time when we were trying to find a way to be unified. But if President Trump is going to come here, he has to come here to mourn with the mourners and to heal with those who seek healing and not to continue the things that he has done that has led to this mourning and this need for healing in the first place. To your point about the president, you would like to see him if he's going to come to mourn with those who are mourning, to try to heal. Kate, could this also then be an opportunity to have that conversation with the president. Instead of saying, don't come, offer him the olive branch and say, Mr. President, come. We need to have a serious conversation. Here's why. 
I believe that before that happens, there needs to be that renouncement of these words and these deeds in order to feel like the conversation would have any meaning and would be productive. Kate Rothstein, Tammy Haps, appreciate you both taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.